Hello, everyone, and welcome to Def Talk, the talk show that focuses on everything World of Warcraft, whether it's classic, retail, or the players that play it. I am Def Talk. I'm sorry, I am Def Camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am Def. We have with us Melderon, of course. Hello, hello, I am Shaman. I mean, I am Melderon. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and we have our very special guest today. If you guys know him, he's known as Taladril. What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, thanks. All right. So, guys, if you don't know who Taladril is, he is pretty much one of the, I'd say, geniuses of WoW. You know, like the geniuses of, of Macintosh. He is basically the <laughs> genius of Vanilla WoW. Anything about anything, he knows it. So we're going to pick his brain a little bit and uh, ask you a few questions. Are you ready, Taladril? Definitely. All right. So let's well, the start first off ones first. are pretty easy. Yeah, the first <laughs> ones are easy. We're going to start off with... How did you get introduced to WoW, and when did you first start playing? Um, well, I got to say it officially. My brother showed it to me, but his roommate showed it to him at the time, and it was actually like uh, the last day of beta, so I actually got to play beta just oh, a little wow. bit. Um, just enough to go, ooh, this looks like a pretty sweet game. I got to play that. So then we we went out and bought it day one and set up our characters and – let the journey take us. Well, that's awesome. Beta. I think you might be one of the first people that we've had to actually play the beta. Yeah. So that's, I, that's... I mean, I didn't, I didn't do anything in it, you know, but, but it was just, just a taste. So was this your first MMO or were you? Uh, yeah, it was. I, I had seen it, uh, not it, but other MMOs like over the shoulder of some people. And it was like, oh, that looks pretty good. I probably shouldn't play that. That would be really bad for my grades. But <laughs> um, you know, I, I finally got sucked in with WoW because it's like this is this is like perfect. So it's like I can't can't miss this. So yeah, I was really glad to have gotten that chance for sure. So your first character, what was it? Uh, Night Elf Rogue, and Same yeah, it was, here, it, was a, it was a good combo. And then it was a dwarf priest after that. So oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I was well. You know, I was like, oh, the DPS class is pretty cool, but then I was like, ah, healing looks pretty sweet, so I, I got to try that. And I did that. I don't remember what expansion it was when I switched over to the priest. Probably like right at BWL or maybe slightly before. But okay, yeah, that was that was the one I mostly rated with. I just did a fraction of MC with my rogue, and of course, none of us knew what we were doing, but... <laughs> so was, uh, so I, you were doing the content at that point, back then, you were doing... Yeah, like you said, bit, people, yeah. yeah. We, um, I was in a pretty... Well, actually, we, we started a, a guild, um, so we, we sort of co-guild led, but not we didn't know what we were doing, of course, but it was a really casual guild, but it was the best people, it was so awesome, the... The, the, that group of people was so special to find. And I don't know what it was about it, but it's just, it was a good group. But um, some of us wanted to raid because it was new for us and other ones specifically didn't want to. I remember there was a couple of people in our guild that were specifically like, oh, we came from EverQuest. Mm. We don't like that raiding experience. We like yeah. the chill family atmosphere. So they're like, no, we're not going to change. We're going to stick with that. That was actually probably one of my few regrets was sort of leaving that group of people to go raiding because honestly, the group was better than the raiding. It was such really? a good group of people. Yeah. Even though the raiding's awesome, but you know. Yeah. That I know sounds, like, that that. sounds like our first guild. It, it does. <laughs> it's very rare that you meet a group of people. Like, you know, I've always been in like, you know, a decent guild, good guild with good groups of people. But then there's always those few people that you connect with in WoW that you kind of look at like these people if i knew them in my real life would be like my best friends you know yeah yeah i mean i i found some old screenshots and i even saw like uh you know you can go back with some of the old guild roster kind of things when i was looking to see who cleared nax on our server and i saw like oh these people were in this guild and it was a list and it was crazy i remembered every single name on there wow was like, you know what's the chance you know i just you think that that would go away but no it was just that it had so much impact that it was just that important, you know? That's awesome. I mean, I know Melderon and myself, we, we have some really fond memories of some of the guildies that we had. And, you know, and it's like the not the greatest players, this and that, but it's that yeah. relationship that you have with the people that, that oh, yeah, is. Yeah, it was it was great. It was just so many great connections. So, so you're known, uh, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, I'm, you're known for playing a druid. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So when when did you start? Um, when did you play your? When did you make your druid for the first time? I made that in Kata when I was starting fresh. Uh, I was showing my wife because she was sort of curious to play the game, so she played a little bit. And I was like, oh, I'll pick up the Druid because I like the idea of being able to do a little bit of everything. And I hadn't yeah. touched it in a while. So I was like, okay, let me try it out. And I was like, whoa, this is a great class. It almost felt like hacking. It's like, wait, I can <laughs> tank and heal and DPS <laughs> with yeah. the same class? How can I do this? This should, this should not be allowed. Um, so, yeah, I, I did that. And it was pretty sweet. And um, then a much later... Uh, was looking in the private scene just because I was like, man, I want to play vanilla. Like I really want to play vanilla. And so I found some server options and tried a few out. And some of them were like the, the fast XP kind. It was like, that sucks. I want to go slow, you know, but um, I, I joined the rebirth at the time that it was sort of, you know, doing okay. I got a druid up to 60 about a month later, they had their big, data rollback and it was like uh crap and so the guild i was in um they were like you know we hear this you know this other server's coming out let's go join it i was like i don't want to re-roll but it was, you know <sighs> they sucked me in so it's like okay fine so then we re-rolled on nostalrius you know day one nostalrius too so hey there you go oh, wow that's, <laughs> awesome. that's pretty yeah awesome. <laughs> so did that you know and we we just burned through the content you know it's like I missed a couple of weeks, but I was there for like the third MC clear, that kind of thing, and, and nice. pretty much didn't didn't miss a week after that. So I was there for all of the uh, all of the content the whole way through, and it was really sweet. Well, and did is... you roll Druid for that as well? Oh yeah, yeah. So that was where I really really cut my teeth with it. So started out with resto tanking. Uh, I was tanking dungeons, so and I was fun. restoing an MC. Oh god, I love that spec. Yeah. It's so good. Um, and then by mm, two thirds through Blackwing Lair, I was like, hey guys, I want to play Feral. And they're like, okay, well, you got enough gear. Why don't you try it? Let's see how it goes. At least they're willing to let me yeah. see how it went. And, you know, and as off tank, I kept doing stuff because I kept being like, ah, I wonder if I can handle this. So, you know, is this going to be too much? Am I going to feel too squishy? And I kept asking healers and however, you know, how am I doing? Does it feel like I'm vulnerable, you know? And it kept being fine. It was like, Druid tank is not a big deal. This is not really a problem. And I just kept going deeper and deeper into content, just waiting for that point where it wouldn't work anymore. And it it never happened, you know? So I, I did progression rating as tank in AQ. I did progression rating as tank in Nax. And it was wow. awesome. Very interesting. That's really that interesting. Is... So that is a really good bridge into what we're going to talk about. So... Yeah. Those experiences, they ultimately drive you into what you're really known for in the interwebs as a premier druid theory crafter. How did you, how did raiding as a tank, is that your transition into what you wanted to learn more? You wanted to break the code, per se? Yeah, it was pretty much like, uh, I honestly started by writing uh, a, a guide, and I just sort of like, it was a memory dump kind of thing. It was at the end of max the guild was sort of falling apart because it was right at christmas and and you know anathema was dying at the time so it was like okay this is sort of coming to a close and it was just like this catharsis just to go through and just write down everything i could think about with druid tanking because it was just something i'd done so much of you know it was just i just wanted to sort of communicate to everybody else this is how it seems to be you know and i got to the point where it was like and druids take X percent more damage than warriors. I was just like, I have no actual idea what that number is. So mm. it's like, well, I know it's something. I know it's more just from the fact that we don't parry as opposed to warriors, right. you know, but it's like how much, you know, I know we've got more armor, but you know, how does it all factor in? So I just went through this monumental task of just trying to quantify it and see what the difference is. And it was like, okay, well, let me try it for different tiers too, because that will be the first question people say is, okay, well, if tier two, then what about tier three, you know, all that stuff. So I went through it and it was like, yeah, you know, they take more damage, um, but it wasn't really that much more. It was like, it, it was obviously a, a reasonable amount. And then the, the most interesting thing to me was like, okay, you know, People say druids are really good for threat, and it was like, yeah, it really shows that druids are really good for threat, and they also 
from at least the process I went through, they were really good at, at providing rate DPS. So it's like, wow. Hey, you're, you know, cause that was the thing everybody says is take a fury instead of a druid because yep. a fury gives more DPS. It's like, yeah. yeah, but you don't factor in the, the, you got the crit aura and you've got the DPS from the warrior, but you don't have the fact that when you're tanking warriors just do garbage DPS mm. and druids, they do not garbage very, DPS. Yeah, it's not it's not DPS great, like but it's okay DPS when you're tanking. Yeah. So it's like that's the that was the key part people were missing is it's yeah. like when you're tanking, your DPS is still pretty good. You know, you can get up to four or five hundred DPS wow. even as a bear, you know, and it's like that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's not bad, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was really the key part. It's like the more you let a druid tank, the better your raid DPS is because of that. And as long as you've got the heels to back it up, mm-hmm. then you're golden. Wow. I, I've got so many questions going on right now. Yeah. I just, it's, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and ask them because I have some written down. So go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so w- would you, are there any boss fights that like a uh, Drew Tank cannot do? Um, yeah. I mean, uh, there, uh, there's plenty that are not, they're not great for. So right. like Nefarian is probably not the best option because you get forced into cat form. Right. Um, so how do you, like, how do you, uh, oh, because it's one of the curses stuff that you, like that. Sorry, it's it's the dru- druid call as you get forced. Druid in call, the cat. that's correct. Yeah, okay, right, right. got it. The worst fight, probably the bar none worst fight, is probably Maxna. Is mm. the because it's you know the 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 um the, that spider you know is that yeah. uh, I don't know how to say her name. That's why I think you say it. But she uh you know last twenty five thirty percent I forget at this point um the warrior needs to go into a uh, shield wall and, and just tank it while everybody is, is being spider webbed. Right, right. Yeah. And yeah. it's a certain critical amount of time. And it's really easy because she's enraging to get one shot. And so the warrior can survive it. You need that call to do it. And right. obviously the druid can't do that. So uh, I would not want to do it, you know, like, yeah, could you do it? Probably, Probably, I guess, but it's just stupid to do it, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's like let's let's force a wipe, you know. And I'm willing to admit the druids are not perfect for everything. That I I don't suggest oh, yeah. it, but you know. There's also some. <laughs> I'm sure there's some fights out there where druids shine over warrior, you know. Yeah. So a druid is a fantastic choice for Thaddeus specifically because his buff slash debuff uh, it scales for druid threat. So, oh. you know, you get that 190% increase to damage and that right. goes straight into druid threat. So druids can do insane levels of threat on that fight. So literally mages, they don't even have to drop ignite. They just keep going and going and going. Wow. <laughs> so it's awesome. That's a pretty impressive mechanic. Yeah. And that allows your DPS to really go balls to the wall. When, yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. All right. Well, that, that you know, fight brings back memories. We did it. We did it during Wrath, so it's not the oh, same yeah, thing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So there's a lot Close of fights enough. like, uh, <laughs> like you know, just Ani. A lot of fights, especially uh-huh. early in MC, where you know, uh, we have a lot. You know, we're raiding right now, and there's some issues with threat. You know, and you know, being on on the horde side, where you know we don't have um, salve, but we, you know we have shamans, yeah. and and it's a lot yeah. harder. So I'm mm-hmm. wondering, you know, like. And you know it's what really pisses me off is so many people are just outright, oh no, we're not even going to try a druid tank. Or we actually have one um, in our guild, and you know he's he's pretty he's pretty geared, and you know he helps out with off tacking with a lot of the boss fights where you need you know right. like four or five six tanks. But um, I you know when I have to heal him, it's not like wow I'm doing so much more healing than I would if it was a warrior. It, it's yeah. literally the same if not better. Inside yeah, well, because they're sort of uh, they get hit probably on average, not exactly less, but generally less, you know, in terms of how hard they get hit. But it's more consistent. So all you do is you just do that slow but strong trickle. And yep. from a healing perspective, it's great. It's really great because it's very predictive and yes, uh, very easy is. to do. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's it's interesting. The the thing that I will say in the negative, so that people are you know. I'll, I'll be very frank about it is that the one negative from a druid tanking standpoint for like a main tank kind of thing. And this was proven by some people who tried to do it in the guild return, which is they're at least at least at the time they were a pretty big deal. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I haven't really followed Northdale at all. So 
no no offense return. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they, uh, they looked into it and the one negative is that like the, the meta is, you know, the, the dual wielding fury tank kind of thing. Um, and that initial threat grab is a lot better for warriors because they have more things that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Druid, you pretty much have maul and you have swipe. And if you're maul and swipe, let's say you get double parry, you are like doubly screwed for two seconds. And that yeah. is a lifetime when it comes to raiding, especially for a start of an encounter. Oh yeah. <laughs> once you once you get it, once you've got threat, you ramp it up and it's fine. But it's that just initial grab that if people don't give it that pause, then it's like, oh, druids suck, and what's happening? They're coming after me, and you know, it's all that kind of stuff. So, which it really isn't that aware. big of a downside, you know what I mean? Because no, the same not. thing could happen to a warrior. War. There are some times where you know, warrior runs in. Uh, you know, and sure, you know, the same same kind of thing happens, and you know, other times where, uh, but you know, for the most part, like like I like I said, it, it seems like a lot of people already just have that um, in ingrained, like a lot of people do in vanilla, like like oh, mm-hmm. you know, you can't raid as a elemental shaman, or you can't, right? You know, and and I think tanking as a druid is probably one of the stupidest, like you know, because um, first of all. Druids are amazing tanks all throughout dungeons, like uh, throughout leveling. So yeah. good. And then, yeah. you know, to think that, oh, they would just drop off and disappear when raiding came, like, yeah, okay, maybe it's uh, their pre bis is a little bit harder, like, you know, with armor gear and stuff like that to get. But, um, you know, for the most part, I've seen druids in, in, in pre bis doing great jobs. And I think it's just that uh, universal, you know, idea that people have in their head, they hear it from somebody else, they hear it from mm-hmm. somebody else, and they think, oh, well, that must be the way it is without ever trying it themselves. I, I think it, the real thing, and I, it's funny to think of it, I think the reason is because at the start of Vanilla, Druids just were, they were horrifically bad at tanking. Yeah. It's because they're, uh, their armor multiplier was only like 125%. So it's like yeah. if you tried to tank as bear in level 60 gear, you would have like 5,000 armor. It's like, nope. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. That's, that's not going to happen. So it's, it's like, like, it's yeah. like being a rogue. Yeah. <laughs> right. They, it's like, yeah. no way. You wouldn't catch me dead tanking anything like that. Wow. That's interesting. So you think maybe people remember, ne- like, we, we remember the negatives over the positives, and I think that could be a yeah. driving factor. Yeah, I think there was no real update to the mentality. There wasn't enough time, especially because the Druid update came in like AQ or, or ZG mm-hmm. or something. I forget, you know, and by that point, people were like, oh, well, this is how classes are, you know, and just didn't give it a chance. Yeah. So perhaps we are, we know that we are probably getting a 1.12 talent system as our basis for classic. So does that 1.12 talent system really... F- Build a foundation for the efficacy of druid tanks in in a classic. Oh yeah, okay. I think so. Yeah, I mean that that's really the key is do we get one point twelve talents and if we do, you know, then we know exactly what the spec is and mm-hmm. we know what the itemization is. So with that, especially with the fact that heck half of the druids decent gear is pre raid bis, you know, is mm-hmm. so it it doesn't even you know it's it's a very clear idea to me that druids will be very effective day one in classic and that'll be great that's great news so let's let's go into your theory crafting so you have two discord channels uh one of them is dedicated to druids and that's more specifically not really theory crafting but you you provide macros you provide consumable lists gear lists add-ons tanking rotations guides so let's elaborate on that channel before we go into your theory crafting channel what more can you say about sure i mean it's it was started by some other guy back early in Nost or Elysium or something, just as a, uh, you know, every class kind of Discord channel. And they all like, existed at the time. And, and But early on, I was really active with that one. I was doing all this stuff. And he was like, hey, you seem active. You want to be a moderator? And I was like, sure. So I, I did that and did that for a long time and kept the channel active. And I think also Drew's just in general, they keep it active because there's so much to talk about. And it really helps with that. Um, but then eventually it was like, hey, you know, I'm sort of like the only guy doing it. Can I just own the channel? And so he's like, yeah, sure. So <laughs> so then I sort of took it over and really have just I, I sort of converted it over to more like, OK, this is going to be the Druid Classic channel. I hope that will continue to be the case as Classic gets closer and closer um, because I think it's got a lot of good content and a lot of people enjoy it. So 
Yeah, I agree. And if you're even remotely considering enrolling a druid on private servers on Classic, please check out this Discord first. Yeah. Uh, it is amazing the amount of uh, data that's on there and the amount of the stuff that you can actually you know learn about druids before you actually jump into it um and yeah. that's so that's your that's a great channel but your i think the bread and butter is your theory crafting channel which if you guys are listening on a podcast format um head over to the youtube channel to get to discord links i'll try to put them in the podcast description but if you can't then check that out so this channel is your theory crafting channel and yeah You've created uh, gear lists, a tank comparison. You've created uh, another gear set for druids, and you compare each each piece of gear each, for each slot, for each build, for each spec. Um, and I just have to ask really quick before we dive deep into that: How many hours did it take you to make one of these <laughs> these things? Oh God, <laughs> too many. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm hoping to put out more actually even so like wow. other you know like rogue and mage and all that stuff because i just oh it irritates me how bad the gear lists are out there you yes. know it's, there it's like here's your pre late rate this set and it's like four options it's like come on there's a lot more options that yeah. are decent to look at you know and i like to know where it comes from and whatnot so you can get a real good comparison um but yeah anyway so yeah i don't know it probably takes me about I would say ten to twenty hours to make one of the gear ones. Easy. Wow! But the the other one, the the tank comparison one, I I don't even want to talk about that. I mean, you can do the math. Each each one of the tests was six minutes for that, and there was a lot of tests. Oh my so god! It was it was a lot to do, so but I'm, it was yeah. you know gripping. So I I, I enjoyed doing it. It was no, crazy that's... though. So I'm interested in so the tank comparisons. So for us non-theory crafters out there, I'm like a I'm a very very noob when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Do you use do you use like a simulation software or a PTR? So how are you actually get gathering this data? Yeah, that was I'm not as pure math kind of theory crafting. I don't I don't really have a good grasp of the equations enough to feel like I'm doing it right. And, and there are other like warrior spreadsheets that do that kind of pure math kind of, this is the output kind of thing that people can look for if they want more accurate numbers, at least from the DPS standpoint. But what I did was I downloaded a PTR and with that, you can really have a lot of controlled test conditions because of that. You can set your buff amounts and just have them go even though they might not normally be that kind of thing, you know, so you can specify, even though it's a 10 second buff, you can specify that it should be a 10 minute buff so that you can do a, a, just a test that's purely with that buff. And then you can compare that versus a no buff and see the exact hmm. benefit that that kind of thing can have. So that was the kind of thing that you can do. And, and so, yeah, the PTRs are really, in my opinion, they, they add that kind of very challenging, um, where, where it's hard to get all the variables and especially for tanks, you know, it's like you get more rage by being hit. So, mm -hmm. so there's this weird sliding scale of like, okay, you're going to get more aggro potential for being hit, but then um, you also will get more damage reduction by not being hit and you know, how, how all that adds up together. So it, I mean, it's probably possible to do mathematically, but, you know, I've never seen anybody do it because that's just a really hard problem to figure out. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something. So you've done all this math and all these uh, theory crafting. Are you a little worried that when Classic comes out, the numbers are going to be a little different? I was worried about that, especially from a talent perspective. But mm -hmm. since it's going to be 1.12 talents, I'm not worried about that. There were some issues, and that's actually why I didn't publish Paladin data uh, mm -hmm. for the threat because... Uh, there were co questions and concerns about, and I don't know Paladins that well, uh, there mm -hmm. was certain spells or a certain spell that didn't seem like it was being um, calculated correctly on the PTR. So I threw that data out because I didn't want there to be a sense of that. But there's a lot of data that I'm, I'm not worried about it. Like okay. It's like, yeah. how much damage does somebody take? Well, first off, it's pretty arbitrary. Boss to boss, it's going to be a different amount. So right. really, you need to just compare it from a if everybody's the same boss, who cares how much you're getting hit by, you know, to a certain extent. Um, but, uh, you know, how much damage are you taking? Everybody knows what those equations are that's all over the internet. Um, 
what damage your spells do, again, that's very well documented. So right. then it's like, well, you've got gear and, and buffs and all that. Like, what is there that we don't know, at least from those kinds of tests? It's very well known. The kinds of things we don't know very much are like, how much armor does a boss have? So mm. that could have a little bit of a change for your um, for the threat values. Right. But then also, it, it's very changed by how optimal are you running your uh, debuff cryo list? You know, are you are you running Annihilator all the time or right. not? Because that will affect what you got. Um, and then you know, like what resistances do bosses have? But you know, I wasn't testing resistances because right. this is all physical damage. So right. it's it's really there's very little that I'm worried about that it's going to be off. It's it might be off by a bit, sure, but more Seems than ten like percent. Yeah. Probably not, you know. Probably I, not. No. Yeah, it's going to be really close ballpark, and they're going to be ballparked in the same direction. So who cares? Yeah, and I think a lot of the stuff that you focused on was, like you said, the knowledge that has been basically, yeah, uh, like you said, spell damage, things like that. That stuff's there. That stuff's everyone knows what it is. It's been that way, you know, yeah. and we're not going to really see a big difference. So that's good that we don't have to worry about that. I was just wondering, like, wow, there, yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't have put the time in if it was just for private servers. I was expecting yeah. that this was going to last through classic in terms of the knowledge base, because it's like, yeah, we know Kenko's threat guide. That's really old data that has been around since vanilla. So right. it's like, hey, we're using those values. Those values are correct. I can be pretty assured that that's what it's going to be with the PTR. So, yeah. OK, so. <clears throat> wow. A lot of information. So one thing I noticed in your tanking comparison, you have a metric called tanking. I guess it's like a tanking score. What does that mean, and how did you compile that or calculate that? Um, the, so there was tanking and threat. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, those, what's those tanking? Two? What does that mean? Is that just a metric? Oh, no, wait. So are you talking about the gear or the gear data or the tank threat comparison? Maybe I'm talking about both. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm confusing myself. I, I saw <laughs> I saw a column that said the word tanking in it, and it had numbers in it. And yeah, I'm not sure so what that is. Yeah. That's probably the gear one. So that one is purely the ability to either be data reduction or avoidance increase. So that one is oh. just better tank stats, and then the other column is threat, so it's better threat stats. So okay, those so are you've, you've entirely created, separate. Is that your own metric that you created, that tanking metric? Is that you've... Uh... Yes, okay. but it's based on based on mathematical formulas that, you know, given certain conditions, because, you know, a, again, like a boss average hit will totally change these numbers I see. to a certain extent. You know, the bigger boss hit will be, you know, armor will be less valuable, dodge will be more valuable, that kind of thing. Um, but given, I, you know, I, I set sort of a midline average for that kind of, you know, the avoidance to mitigation kind of level. And with that, I, I set one tanking value so that it was at least useful from a, a, a holistic perspective kind of thing. Because how else are you going to compare it without choosing something somewhere, you know? Correct. Yeah, that's a really good way of doing it, actually. So so that's really interesting. And also, something really interesting that I noticed, a lot of the items for the warriors, the threat is increased if you're, in, if you're fury-based. So is that just because of... So I know fury produces, you know, you have talents that will increase your damage... But I thought that protection stance increases your threat. So are you saying that you baseline produce more threat when you're Fury? Or can you maybe elaborate on that a little bit? That's a tricky one. Um, the sort of uh, Fury takes off more and more the more buffed you are. So Prot has a better baseline level of threat because they're a bit more ability-focused than talent and gear focused. Um, they both do pretty comparable levels, um, but prot, you know, they've got a they've got a bonus with deep into the prot tree where it's like ten percent increase to one handed damage. So when you're in uh, when you're in death stance, they don't have a reduction in damage because of that. So it's still a hundred percent for them. While fury in death stance, they are going to take that ten percent loss right off the top. Uh, but then Fury gets the bonus, gets the benefit of like Flurry, and they have other kinds of talents as well that are quite good in their in their Fury tree that that they get a benefit from. So yeah, in general, Fury does do better by the numbers than Prot, not by a lot, 
Um, but honestly, yeah, I mean, if, if you were to ask me, hey, what, what spec would you tank as um, if I was to ever play a warrior? It would be Fury, honestly, because I would wow. do Fury. From 30. the get-go, too? Uh, like, sure. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, that was the, yeah, there, you, there's not much difference. It, people have this, like, Fury's only good with super good gear. No, nah, Fury, Fury's fine even from the start, at least from a tanking perspective. Mm. They, they, you know, their, their threat was quite good that I saw with my tests. So that wasn't really a big deal. That's but, an interesting yeah. result. That's very wow. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you look at the prot tree, it's really pretty garbage. Like the mm. early talents are super strong. And so you get, you know, down to the 11 points or whatever to get your, your second, um, your second block, you know, whatever that one is. And then, and you get your extra armor and you get your extra, uh, threat percent, you know, and then once you get that, it's like, hey, do you want a couple points off rage for Sunders or, you know, you want longer shield wall? And it's like, if you're in a good guild, you don't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. So it's like, who cares? <laughs> Just, you know, the, the name of the game is damage reduction and threat, and yeah. there's no damage reduction deep into the prot tree. There's no real threat deep into the prot tree, so it's all situational spells. So you might as well just go Fury anyway, because it gives you more threat options. Because then you get like uh, Bloodthirst or whatever, or you know all those other spells that I don't remember off right, the top. So of people my head. Are like, yeah, you need Shield Slam the tank. They're like, mm, yeah, not no. really. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, an incredible that's result. one of those things. Well, that's, you know, you'll see a lot of people too that are like, oh man, if they, if they've got, uh, if they don't have 1.11, uh, prot spell, whatever for the implementation, because the, the shield slam for the prot tree back then it didn't have spell scaling or something scaling. Um, so the, so shield slam was a lot less capable. So people are like, oh, you know, vanilla is going to be totally different without prot having that. I'm like, no people will just go Fury, and they don't even use that spell. Yeah. So you're going to see no change in that sense. All you're doing is bickering about nothing. So it's people don't really have that bigger picture. It seems like there's a lot of misinformation out there sometimes when it comes there to certain a things. a ridiculous amount yeah. of misinformation out there, unfortunately. We can address some of that later, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So before we transition to something that's really interesting, and uh, uh, I have to say something that really blew my mind, um, listening to Countdown the Classic. So out of all your theory crafting, what is the most surprising result? Is it that bear tanks are way more viable than people give them credit for? Um, or what is it? Mm. It's Bear tanks are entirely normal for tanking that was that was nice to see although tier three they really do like tier three warriors are just insanely good but they're so insanely good that they literally have rage problems usually so they start taking that stuff off <laughs> anyway they're in threat mm -hmm. gear anyway so it's like you know what's the point you know um it was nice to see although it didn't surprise me that much that druids do more damage as tanking compared to other other classes that was great to see that uh, I was really excited to see that because that's sort of the, the clincher is it's like, well, what's the gain? And it's like, well, that's the gain. Is there worth more DPS? So, yeah, that was probably the best part to me. Interesting. And, and how viable is power shifting kitty cat, would you say, briefly? It's pretty good. Uh, there's a guy out there, Shado, that he does – he's been doing some insane numbers. He did a lot on uh, the Lights Hope server, not, mm. not Northdale. But, yeah, he was – he was pushing pretty high numbers. I don't remember the numbers exactly, but he streamed quite a bit. And he's actually got a, a spreadsheet on the Druid channel that you can check out oh, and wow. plug stuff in for him. But yeah, it's it's quite good, you know. And if you're not minding not having perfection ever constantly, like if you've got a quality shape shifter, power shifter Druid, um, you know, if they're the bottom tier rogue, who cares? You know, they're still putting out rogue DPS, right. so. You know, just let them do it. Um, the, the key is really, you know, if you're going to let people do those specs, though, you, you can't shaft them in the gear aspect. They need yeah. to be geared just like everybody else needs to be geared. And I'll just put out the plug right now for people listening that druids have probably the hardest time getting hit capped. So hit mm. gear for druids is huge. So I know everybody's like, ooh, DFT for warriors, DFT for rogues. <laughs> druids really need that too. Like 
really need it. It's our options are so limited that we get stuck with having gear in the bank because we just are not hit cap because wow. of it. So it, it can be but, tricky. I'd also imagine one of the difficult things for uh, a kitty doing you know shape shifting with the with the what's the helm called again that um wolf's head helm wolf's head helm. So I'd imagine one of the hardest part is managing your mana. Is that that is a pretty big one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not very good at the power shifting. It's just I, I'm a little bit too cheap, so I'm buying all the consumables. All the yeah. stuff. It's yeah. like, ah, I don't want to do it. But yeah, the managing mana, uh, the timing of it is actually the mm-hmm. hardest. It's, it's that decision making, and you have to do it quickly of, do I power shift now, or do I wait for that energy tick? or you know, And then when do I wait for that energy tick, and then what do I do if I miss, or something like that? Is right. that kind of very rapid decision making. Even if you have a macro, if you don't time it right, you're losing DPS because you're missing out on your autos, your white hits. Ah, so right. it's so. really critical to get every single cat white hit. Huh. And then, of course, you're running off with uh, with your latency, too, because latency will uh, actually affect it quite a bit. That's so, an issue, yeah. Yeah, it really is. I had one question from – I wanted to go off the druid a little bit, but I want to stay on the, on the uh, theory crafting topic for a second. So um, I'm huge into healing. My thing, I love healing, right? Um, yeah. And you were talking about <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, I love priests as well. I love paladins too, but I'm playing a priest right now. I love yeah, I love paladins. priests. Yeah, if so, priests could uh, tank, I would be a priest oh, for sure. Oh, that would <laughs> but be I love tanking too. You know, it's just like uh, I, I don't like casting, so that's my thing. It's just gotcha. like, I like healing. I like tanking, and melee DPS is okay. Yeah, so, it's okay. Yeah. Druid does a pretty good job for that. But yeah, yeah go yeah. ahead. <laughs> so um, holy weaving, you were talking about that. And I, just as you were talking about that, I was thinking to myself, you know, um, you're, you're talking about like basically, uh, you know, this is this would be later on, probably after the ZG, where you would have mm-hmm. where you would have a shadow priest um, normally giving the shadow weaving buff for the warlocks to increase their shadow damage, right? So you were saying right. that yes. the better way to do this would be possibly be having, you know, a holy priest uh, who spec down into uh, shadow weaving? Who would you know occasionally put on mind blasts to uh, you know uh, get the the proc on there, but without actually losing that spot as a healer? Right. You know? Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, like, I don't know, this might be totally stupid, but since you're not, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be that good if you're not doing that with shadow damage. But I was thinking if you maybe possibly spec down, say, into like vampiric embrace or even improved vampiric embrace. Would that be something viable where you could be kind of like a damage dealing healer uh, mixed with some holy um, spells too? Or is that is that kind of my just wishful thinking thing? <laughs> well, I I honestly, you know, I don't like to talk from a, a sense where I don't really have a good idea. I'm not really into the full understanding of the holy weaving, and I honestly haven't even ever played a shadow priest. I actually. I level this wholly the entire way. So, really? Wow. Yeah, I, I've never specced into Shadow to even have played it. <laughs> wow. But I can tell you there's a lot of people on the Theory Crafting channel, like Kev Tank, for example, that is there. That's sort of like their mantra is that Holy Weaving is awesome and that, yeah, it's a great way to do it. But I'm going to have to try it then. Yeah, yeah you, you should check it out. I, I mean, I think it's an interesting idea. It's more of a, you know, is it really worth it or is it more just, you know, on paper really good? Right, because sometimes it's more more challenged than it's worth, you know, and, yeah. and that's the nice sort of the nice part about forty man raises. It's like it's okay to have a little bit of slop here and there, as long as you're clearing the content, you know. Yep. It's okay to to just let that kind of stuff go, you know, because people just do way too much things for optimization. But you know, optimizing classes is probably the biggest thing that you could do, but probably the hardest in reality, just because then you actually have to have a roster that makes sense and it has to have no fat too which that's pretty impossible yeah well i think it's time to move from from (laughs) science to philosophy what do you guys think oh all right yes i'll put on my uh my um my greek uh yeah robe what is it (laughs) called yeah toga 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 there you go yeah so let's let's we might get some blood boiling here in the next segment so what we're talking about (laughs) here is in countdown the classic if you're not part of the countdown the classic community you're part of our community please go over to josh's and and get involved in his discord and and his show it's a great show and he had a yes he had a three-on-three changes versus no changes podcast and our 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 uh, our, our per- person who interview our interviewee Taldra was on the side of no changes. I'm sorry, no. changes. Sorry, was, yes. sorry, changes. I'm sorry if I just said that. Maybe it's just my inner 
no changes coming out. <laughs> so, and I have to say, the most solid argument comes from Taladrill for changes, and his changes, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you put it in your own words, are not the kind of changes that you guys are probably thinking about. So, Taladrill, yeah. what, what were your changes? My changes are to keep the spirit of vanilla, not to go with the dogmatic, this is how it was in vanilla, therefore we shouldn't change it kind of thing. We need to make the game feel like how it used to. We Everybody's talking about it being a time capsule and how it's preserving history. Well, the best way to do it would be to preserve how the history actually feels. And I think, honestly, when you're talking, looking at archaeologists and whatnot, there there is some creative license that they do for that kind of thing because they're trying to convey the feel of the site, not the actuality of it to a certain extent. That's a good, that's a good statement. Yeah. So your changes would be in, in a way of, um, so preserving the game in a way where you think that we've kind of overplayed a lot of it to death and figured things out about things like world buffs and things like certain builds and viability of certain specs that we can maybe break the meta a little bit per se and then make it a little bit more yeah. difficult. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because like, hey, it, early on, Molten Core was a challenge for everybody. So mm -hmm. why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't it be released in a way that it actually is a challenge? Because right now, for the people that especially know how to do it, it's such a ridiculous face roll that it's it's a joke. And and I worry that you know the people that are not vanilla fans and they come in and go, okay, let's see how vanilla is. And especially with Molten Core being the first one that comes out. They're going to get into it and be like, yep, we knew it. Molten Core is LFR, and you guys are a bunch of puny losers who have no clue how to raid, and they need to go back to BFA where it's actually a challenge and try mythic raiding because that's actually a challenge. You know, it's like, and it's going to happen. It's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it either. So what? So what, how do you propose we, we change it? What are some of the steps and some of the ways you think we can encapsulate the difficulty of Van Van Vanilla had back in the day, back in its heyday? Yeah. Okay. So we'll just we'll just soapbox the whole thing. So right. uh, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of stuff, but let's just start out with. Um, okay. So 1.12. We know we're going to get 1.12. So that means we're getting 1.12 talents. Now, in in a lot of ways, that's a good thing. That means that the classes are a little bit more even. But that means that they're also more even from a DPS standpoint, because back in early vanilla it was pretty much rogue and nobody else. And I've mm -hmm. honestly, I've got a screenshot of me being top DPS yeah. in Molten Core and I'm like a third higher than anybody else because oh I'm a rogue and everybody else is not, you know, they don't know what they're doing. So yeah, it was, it, yeah. exactly. So mm -hmm. it was just like early game was all about the rogue. And if you look at it too, like rogue was the last class to get changed because WoW knew that, that Rogue was the best shape talent-wise. So they were like, we're going to wait until the end for them. And and mm -hmm. their change was pretty minor because they were, they were fine, you know? Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to be doing more DPS, especially, you know, Fury Warriors. Everybody likes their Fury Warriors. Well, Fury, and back then it was trash. Everybody was arms because that was, you know, the only way to do decent DPS. So we've got a whole group of Melee that are now going to be doing solid DPS. And I remember telling some friends early on, I was like, oh, it's so cool. You go into Molten Core and, you know, you're sitting there and you're, you're trying to kill the boss and it takes like t five minutes to kill the boss. You know, how long does it take for people to kill Molten Core bosses on private servers right now mm. with world buffs? Like 20 seconds. Yeah. I got that. Well, yeah. I mean, once you're world, once you're world buff and you're on farm, I mean, okay, I'll, so you're I'll, not yeah, world buff. Yeah, okay, 35 yeah. seconds. I mean, you know, it doesn't really, you know. It took us about a minute, a minute and uh, and a half to, to download <laughs> MC bosses. But a lot of us aren't even pre raid BIS. So I will admit yeah. that. A lot of us yeah. are still in greens and stuff. Once you get geared, they just get burned, man. Yeah. So it's it's molten core bosses. I would love to actually see a couple of their abilities, you know, <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Because you can go through stuff and it's like, oh, there's that one rain of fire. And that's it, and the god and the boss is dead, and there's your free loot, you know. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, is, so is the uh, answer to this question to buff bosses, buff their damage, or maybe their armor yeah. ratings? Okay. I think that yeah, maybe not their armor, but yeah, I think well, I mean, you could actually buff their armor because then it would be less of a melee game mm -hmm. because that's a big thing is melee are really strong. So yeah, yeah, you buff their armor and it makes melee a lot weaker. So that's an interesting idea. That would be super easy, you know. Um, 
yeah, buff their armor, definitely buff their health, like, a lot. I mean, if you look at their health, it's crazy. Like, Lucifron or something has, like, 290,000 yeah. DPS, or health, 290,000. You know how much, like, Thaddeus has? Like, 3 million. So, you know, Nax bosses wow. have 10 God. times the health. 10 times the health as MC bosses. Wow. It's, it's unnecessary, you know. <laughs> their, their health is so low compared to what it needs to be. So, so yeah, buff buff the bosses. I can see the lot. gears in Def Camp's head turning right now. He's well, like, no, I, I, <laughs> well, I got a couple of things that. So, yeah, I also heard that also in Wrath, the difference of the the bosses like health wasn't even that much far off of how it was in Vanilla. That's how oh, that's how tuned, how highly tuned it was in Vanilla. But that's just yeah. I don't know. That's what I've heard. So, I know you um, like for certain things, like for uh, obviously for uh, Druid tanking. You really like the 1.12 towns, but in a way, would you almost have rather seen like a 1.2 or a 1.1 start um, to maybe that be the uh, way to make the difficulty harder again? Or do you think no. that would have been too much? That would have been no. that would have been overboard. I'm I'm very much against going back to that kind of stuff, just because I know how much work it would be for them to do it, and and it would be for very little gain. It's you know the thing people conveniently forget is it's like that initial transition from the beginning to the late game it only is going to happen once blizzard is very likely not going to be doing these rolling restart kinds of servers the fresh meme that everybody does yeah so if they do it okay great everybody who played classic now gets to experience it once and then anybody who missed it again missed it forever (laughs) so they put all this effort in for something that only the people who started are going to appreciate and people won't appreciate it. Like those initial talents are bad. And Blizzard is good at they're they're good at at raids. They're good at tuning. So why not just tune the raid? Like that's such an easy mm-hmm. answer. And then every spec's enjoyable. No spec is gonna sit there going, My my class is useless until one point nine. You know, it's mm-hmm. like that's not good gameplay. Let's play the game where it was done. You know, WoW was pretty much a beta for a long time even though it was released it was still sort yeah. of beta they were know? still learning so a lot yeah they were learning a ton so okay. just to go go through those learning pains just just get rid of it and and play the game where it was the best at where it yeah. was at the end of it for all of that to yeah me. and even though i'm pretty hardcore no changes i i have said since we heard the 1.12 water cooler announcement i have said that i think it's almost inevitable to buff mc and ani because of the 112 talent system do you think there's any credence to that Oh, I, I would say. I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well buff it. Like, that's really what you're asking for. But there's a lot of other really uh, important questions to ask. Like, gear itemization is, mm. oh, such a challenge. Yeah, let's, let's, get in, no, let's, get into, yeah let's get into that. Yeah. So that's there is, yeah, there's, there's no good answer. There's zero good answers for how to implement gear itemization. What do you, you know? think so, about how they do it on, 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 say, on private servers now where we have the... Um, so right now, like I have, you know, certain rings that uh, it's the early itemization. And then like next month, like the plus healing gets like doubled, you know, I get like in, yeah. in, in spirit on it. But right now it has literally half the stats. And I think that's very important. But, you know, and then automatically you log in a month later and then you get like buffed like crazy. And it's like, whoa, you know, I mean, it's it's it's. It's less good because we know it's coming, you know, I think yeah. to a certain extent. I, I'm less... If I had to choose, if I was in charge, I would probably say I'd skip all the stuff where the stats are changing for the items because then it just turns into this chaos kind of thing and it feels very minute to minute and it doesn't give a good gameplay feel, especially to people who don't know what's coming. It's just like, wait, what? That changed? Wait, I have to change? I have to delete my WDB? Like, what? what's happening, you know? Um but something has to be done. Like so, my my biggest example for there are no good options is the uh, loot tables in the dungeons late game. After I think I guess it was probably like 1.10 and even I think 1.11, they added all this ketchup loot to mm-hmm. the dungeons. Yeah. So there are these dungeon blues that are insanely good. You yeah, know like they like are BRD. up to Blackwing yeah. level, Blackwing lair level stuff. It's just like whoa, these are really good pieces. You just can't release that stuff no. when Molten Core comes out. You can't no. do it. Um, I don't even think Dire Maul stuff should be released when Molten Core is No, out. I like that Dire Maul wouldn't be 
yeah. later for sure too. Right. Um, and I, I mentioned quickly on on the podcast that I think that Ani and MC need to wait as well. They should not come out too. I would um, actually agree with that. I mean, I mean, I know that's a change, but to me, yeah. it makes sense in a way. I don't know. Well, I you've just, you've yeah. seen all these power levelers that you know they the, the first guy got to got to 60 in like four days or five yeah, days or something even, like literally yeah. five days, not five plate days, but five days. I think we had a record breaker re- uh, recently. Someone got there in like, what, what was it, uh, Phil? I uh, think it was four days or something like that. Four on, days yeah, played. Yeah. Maybe three. Well, we can't, yeah. I mean, we can't yeah. say that that's an official record. I know that. Yeah, uh, exactly. We you don't know, know. But, but, uh, but you yeah. know, yes, regardless, somebody yeah. still did it. So yeah, yeah, it's like, that's, you know, it's just, it, the, remember, we, we we said it, like half the game is the leveling, and I don't want to be rushed just to get into a decent rating guild just because that's what everybody else is doing is the crazy leveling up to that. Yeah. But so here's here's a conundrum that you guys can, can wonder about, <laughs> you know, is like, okay, so we're talking about not releasing Dire Maul. Well, how about, you know, it sounds innocuous, but how about the Paladin and Warlock epic mounts? Should we have those in release? Hmm. I would you say know, no. Do you know why you shouldn't? No. Because the Paladin one requires a pristine black diamond, and That's those right. didn't yeah. come out until much later, and yeah. that is a major impact on the economy because those things are not supposed to be out until much later, and they're yeah. supposed to be super rare. I remember in Vanilla, Very expensive. those puppies were worth like five hundred. Oh gold. yeah, oh yeah. In I mean, yeah. in current, because everybody does all that dungeon grind initially, they're down to like five gold because everybody gets them and they yeah. don't need them until much much later. Yeah, those aren't supposed to be dropping uh, until much later, but nobody does that. Huh? And these you are, have to have it drop we, early. You, you yeah. have to have it drop early because it's required in the paladin quest. Hmm. Interesting. See, I, I would point. say let let the paladins and warlocks have to buy a, a mount. Like the rest of us, and then they can get their special mount later. I agree. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, the Such salt though. <laughs> the, the salt that would happen. Yeah. Oh my god! You're right. So let's let's <laughs> backtrack for a second. So we went over boss yeah. buffing. We went over itemization. How about world buffs? And we world we, buffs. Had, we had orc bit on two weeks ago or two two episodes ago. I think it's two. And mm, I remember yeah. you. We were t- we were briefly communicating on Discord. You remember saying, yeah. "There's something I want to bring up." Uh, an argument of an argument to to work, but do you remember what that was, or is, is was something concerning world buffs? Well, certainly just in general, because I know he was like, I don't want stuff to be changed. Yes. But I I, I went back to my I tank sheet just because I was curious, um, because world buffs have very little impact on survivalness from a tanking perspective. Uh, they don't add much except for extra health. Now health is certainly quite valuable, and I would say that also has impacts for uh, like the dual wielding kind of tanking because that extra health pool really helps those buffer the kinds of damage increases that people get from that. Right. But, but regardless the, the, from the threat perspective and the damage perspective, I, you know, the numbers that I did, I sort of cherry picked just randomly here and there. It lo- it was like 30 to 50% increase in damage that tanking tanks would do. So you can imagine what oh. DPSers are increasing by getting fully raid buffed. Now this is like Dire Maul buffs, Ani head. Dire Maul, like, Ani head, head, the whole smash. Thirty ZG, to fifty okay. percent increase in damage. For tanks. For just tanks, yeah. And that's you know, forget DPS. You know, how much are they increasing? You know? That is a ton. Wow. A ton. And I mean, remind me you what imagine? your uh, what was your remedy for that? I think it was really interesting. The, I mean, the buffs, they just cannot, they would need to get auto removed if right. you were when going you into the dungeon. Yeah. And yeah. Then yeah. Put, like, put keep, them, keep them up there. there. If you want to go into a battleground, if you want to raid a capital city, yeah. if you want to whatever, it's fine, you know. Um, we even just, I was I was having an argument on, on the countdown to Classic recently because somebody was like, hey, you know, it's, we don't want to mess with the game. And I was like, hey, you know what, if, if Blizzard actually implemented the Ani head correctly, it's going to be the worst gameplay experience you could imagine because the Ani head has a random, it's random and it's a despawn timer of like, I don't know the exact number, but like three to eight hours, something like that. Okay. So if just imagine how life will be, okay. The head disappears and you want that buff and you want to go raiding with that buff. So first you get your dire mall buff 
Well, you probably wouldn't get your dire mall buff. I don't know. Let's just we're just talking on your head. Okay. So you're sitting there, you're sitting there in Stormwind because you really, really want that Ani head buff. And you have to sit there because you don't know when it's going to despawn and you want to be there for when somebody actually pops it. And it could be at any time. So then somebody randomly pops and you go, great, I got my buff. Now you need to log out. And you're going to have your main logged out until raid. And when is that going to be? I would say most likely the next day. So the f day before raid, you're going to be sitting in Stormwind, effectively AFK or semi-AFK until the stupid buff goes off. And then you get the buff, and then you log out, and you're no longer on your main for an entire day, no matter what, because you can't lose the buff. <laughs> and, then, and then you log on for your yeah, and then you're and then you're on your raid, you're on the on for the raid day, and then you have your raid. Yeah, and then you get ganked or you get a, you know, whatever, ganked them away the dungeon, and, and all and your you buffs have, are gone. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a rage out, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, it's the the world buffs and how people have to save them and protect them and log out for them. None of that is good for the gameplay experience. We know with Classic, the whole point of the game is that social aspect and the being together and being on and whatever else. There's no parts of world buffs that are that are beneficial to the community. Now, Honestly, it feels they, like retail. That kind of feel, mentality. I know that it's fun. I know people love to do the PvP kind of stuff where it's like, ooh, they've yeah. got their buffs, so i got to go get them. I mean, I get it. That's my that's, thing. Like, That's, that's like, a pretty yeah. good thing. But yeah. there's you can still do that with um, you can still do that by just griefing them where they're trying to get to the raid and you're griefing them on the way. I mean yeah. that's a thing you yeah. could do. Um, there's ways that you could do it maybe where um, where uh, if if there's certain bon benefits to I don't know world PvP with the buffs, you know it would maybe give more incentive for them to do capital city stuff. Maybe if they got rid of like say dishonorable kills or something like that and they made. Right world city uh attacks more lucrative for pvp then that could be a really exciting aspect too so like, that's I, that's totally yeah. not part of rating <laughs> so so i like i hear i hear what you're saying here and I, like I, so like my head the way it works i'm like oh yeah this sounds good and i'm like but okay like, with this this so okay let me let me just do like an overview so guys basically you know what taldrill's saying here is he's not he, he wants these changes so it would feel more like a vanilla experience of how it was actually in vanilla, which I understand because a lot of these things people weren't aware of. They were, you know, it happened, but it wasn't exploited, you know, exploited the way that it is today where, you know, it's almost mandatory where you have to go to every raid. Because then you think about all these world buffs and then you go into raid and then you got your consumables on top of that. I mean, that's, that's just a lot of extra damage that it's really isn't even needed. You know, the, the, there's, there's a couple of things people say, um, oh, casual guilds won't do this. You're right. Most people in casual guilds won't do that, but every guild has their meter hoppers. So there's always people who are going right. to be doing it, and there's always a pressure to do it. And every time, even the casual guilds are like, go get your buffs, it really makes a big difference, you know? So it's yeah. always in the game, no matter what. No, yeah. Now, now, and, now some, some of the, I just want to say, like some, some of the arguments that I hear on the opposite of that is because, oh, oh well, you know, it does take longer to get a 40-man raid group together. It takes longer sometimes. So, you know, having these buffs uh, in a way issues it out with, uh, you know, the time constraints that people might have so that you can clear the instance. But then a lot of people say, well, why do you want to, you know, do this so quick? You know, and, and there's a lot of good reasons and bad reasons, I think, that, uh, you know, why these are – but, you know, I, I, something that I'm sure you hear a lot is once you start doing all these things – you know, you need to remove world buffs. Um, you, you, um, what, what else we say? Remove world buffs. Um, buff, buff bosses. Buff, you know, bosses and stuff like that. At what point does it stop? You know, and, and I'm sure you probably will roll your eyes at this, but at what point does it stop uh, be, being vanilla? You know. I mean, it stopped being vanilla with the private servers when people were able to learn about the game more thoroughly. I mean. I did raiding. I raided every single raid in vanilla. I did a little bit of Nax. I did half of AQ. So I didn't get to the end, but I mean, I did it. You know, I did all of Blackwing Lair. I did all of MC. I didn't even know world buffs existed. Okay. For the entirety of vanilla, I did not know it existed. And I was a vanilla raider. Okay. Yeah. So, so the fact that we know they exist and we know the strength of consumables, um, this is the genie that you can't put back in the bottle. So you either 
need to remove the genie or you need to accept that vanilla will never be what it was. And so, you know, I would remove the genie because I liked it back then and I thought it was nice. And I don't really want to play the game with it overpowered. And, you know, people say that it's like, oh, well, it'll make it easier. But I didn't, you know, why are we saying we need to make it easier for casuals? I thought the whole enjoyment of the game was that not everybody deserves to see Nax. Mm. You know, only the guilds that care should be able to do it. Yeah. So why are we finding ways to try and make all of these raids easy mode? Like having world buffs effectively takes a heroic dungeon and turns it into a normal dungeon. Yeah. It scarily that a- sounds like retail homogenization. In a yeah. way, I like think that, there's you know, no yeah. reason for that. And and it makes it makes the raids trivial easy for the hardcore raiders. So why should we make it easy for them? Like they should have it be hard. But then I hear the argument of the people who do next who say world buffs is almost mandatory. It's know. not. We we had on Anathema, we were able to progress up through Kel'Thuzad um without world buffs. Without any world buffs. Yep. Now you could say maybe the tuning's a little bit off, but mm-hmm. I think it was pretty good, you know. Right. So with 1.12 talents, with what we all know about with consumables, with how everybody is talenting and, and using the proper rotations and whatnot, I think that Nax does not need world buffs like it used to. And, you know, a lot of things about world buffs, too, so where I do, you know, understand this is, like, a lot of people go and get their world buffs, and, you know, you might get one or two bosses where, you know, if you're doing progression, right, and you have your world buffs, you're going to lose them. You know, it's... it's Yeah, and that, honestly, it that's probably one of the most toxic aspects of the game is, man, when people lose their world buffs, they get so pissed, yeah. and the quality of the raid instantly tanks. Instantly. Yeah. You get you get one, one um, wipe, and that raid, because we don't have world buffs, it's compounded because everybody's in a bad mood, and they lost their world buffs, and they're not going to be able to do top DPS anymore, and... It, it's just so negative, and it's not just because uh, you're so much le- more vulnerable. It's just because people stop trying. They've stopped putting in the effort, mm. and, and it's just it just doesn't have a good feel. And, heck, I mean, I don't think I've seen hardly anybody complaining about how the private servers are doing it now where they remove world buffs for the first month or something like that. Everybody mm. has been saying they really like it. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I think yeah. Honestly, people like it. Sorry, go ahead. Keep yeah. <laughs> but pe- people people like it because they like the idea of preserving the history. It seems like, mm. but but if you really sit down and think about it, it seems like all of the people who actually experience are like, nah, world buffs. They really don't add value. They only add more DPS capability, which it's a sad reason to stick around if yeah. that's the only reason you're going for. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, know, I want to when ahead. I kill when I kill a boss or finish MC, I want to know that I did it on my own power. And my own skills. Yeah. And I think yeah, it feels that, better. And it feels horrible saying this, but I think that I think you're right, Sal Cheryl, and I and I I uh, I don't know how to fit this in my head. I don't know how to it's like, you know, eating vanilla your whole life. Vanilla mm-hmm. ice cream. I'm not talking about vanilla World War Cup. Yeah, yeah. And then someone gives you a bowl of chocolate ice cream and you're like, I don't like chocolate, I don't know what that is and then you eat it and you're like, Oh my god, this is really good. Yeah, <laughs> I, right. I kinda feel like that right like, now. Yeah, then it's like, but just eat vanilla because, you know, but you know that that just doesn't happen. You know, people no. can't just not do it. It's like that this never been a valid argument in the history of the game. It's like, well, just choose to not do it. It's like, yeah, right. Good luck. If it's there, that. you're going to do it. You know? Everyone and, tries yeah, to pass exactly. resistance. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, yeah, it's, not it's, like... it's, it's, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Taldro. It's disingenuous. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> and yeah. what I keep coming back to, and it's like, it's not like, you know, we're talking about adding changes here that are game breaking. It's not like we're talking about adding LFR or putting anything in the game to make it easier, to make it um, more uh, for the casuals, friendly. Right. You know what I mean? This is at its core uh, trying to make it more of what it was like in vanilla, which is why yeah. I give it a lot more thought than I would any other when people start playing about, you know, um, graphics or about, uh, oh, yeah. you know, stall yeah. animations, this and that. And I'm just kind of like, you know, you're no, 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 no. But like, this because is Because I why think those are inherently be- selfish, whereas Taladrill is looking at the whole greater good of the game. Yes, I, that, exactly. This is why, like, for me, you know, I'm, I'm no changes. I'm, you know, a lot of me is like, well, this is the game we want. Yeah. Is it perfect? No, there's going to be some things that 
uh, are going to be crappy about it. Yeah, you know, not every game is perfect at its core. Um, and maybe do we have to accept it with these certain things? But then when I look at it and I think, okay, you know, is this something that would be, um, you know, game breaking, or is this something that would have implications that would reach out to, uh, you know, people, um, you know, not feeling like they're getting the true vanilla experience. And I don't think so. I think it, it, if anything, like you said, it would make the experience more, um, vanilla, like whatever, mm-hmm. you know, wh- but, but what is that someone, some other people who may have, um, like really hardcore at the time who did go out and get the world buffs in vanilla, that might be their experience, you know, cause everyone's, uh, experience is, you know, based on what their experience was. It's, it's, you know, your experience might be different than mine. I didn't start playing it's subjective, yeah. one point eight subjective, right? That's thank you. I was looking for the word. So, yeah. um, it's kind of hard to define, you know, cause Every, I think everybody wants something different, but everyone wants the same thing. Everyone wants vanilla. They want vanilla to be the game they remember, right? But for a lot of people, that's a different thing. And I think that's mm-hmm. the issue. So, so here's a here's a maybe a thought experiment for for this kind of thing because I think it's sort of along the same lines. Is you know how how absolutely vanilla do you need to be? I would say that world buffs. You know, obviously Blizzard sort of baked it into the Nax encounter, but at the same time, if they, if it had been something that was continuously used throughout the game, they probably would have done something about it. Mm. And they would have seen it as this was a bit overpowered. We would, we did an oopsie on that one. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. yeah, So talking about it as an oversight, something that I think nobody would say is going to make it into vanilla is something that existed throughout vanilla and throughout TBC, and only was fixed in Wrath. So it's not even a TBC thing. This is yeah. something that people didn't know. You might know what I'm saying. Uh-huh. And that's Fire Rogues yep. with their fire buffed items. Okay, So you get the concept that there's certain items in the game that had 100% spell power scaling. And hey, that's not broken. That's vanilla. <laughs> But that completely changes how the class plays and how the game plays. And if you go with that and you say, well, that's what vanilla is, I mean, that will not feel like vanilla if we accept yeah. that as something that's in there. And I think that the world buffs is going to be pretty much the same thing. The only reason it was in there is because it wasn't ubiquitous. It was because it was only used by the top because only the top realized the strengths of it. And it would have been the same thing if that item, you know, the fire items were used in vanilla. Blizzard would have squashed that so hard because yeah. they're like, no, we do not want people to play like that. I and mean, if like, it was the like case, Rec- yeah. Rec- it, it's, it was like exactly. That was that was a 24 hour patch. It's like, nope, yeah. we're not going to let you one shot Kazakh. That's exactly. not what we were meaning for you to be able to do that. You know, it's like somebody figured it out and they were like, oops. <laughs> that's, I think that's, that's an extremely what... valid argument. I think yeah. that. They didn't. It wasn't. It wasn't popularly known. Therefore, Blizzard didn't really hot fix it. But I think that the development team is definitely keeping their eyes on this kind of thing, and they're watching private server. Even though they don't want private server footage, I guarantee the devs oh, yeah, are looking watching. at stuff oh. and are like, oh, "Okay, yeah. this is I, not happening. This is not happening." One hundred percent. I I very much hope they they see that kind of stuff and go, "Yeah, that that's not fun. That doesn't work. We shouldn't do that. You know, all that kind of stuff." Because I'm glad that the private servers are doing all that kind of stuff because it's. The stuff that they're doing, it's like, give me a break. Stop yeah. tweaking all this stuff. You know, it's not fun for people, and there's so much confusion, and it, it's just not good for the game. It doesn't help. It doesn't give you that depth like you're hoping for. It just gives that just very confusing sense of what what is and what should be. You know, it, it's difficult right. in that sense. So. I wonder what a good compromise would be in this situation. You know, um, I'm trying yeah. to think where something where we could kind of both be happy in a way, um, you know, something where on the lines of, you know, and, and the problem that I see Tal drill a lot now is that it is becoming more necessary for the casual type guilds. Well, at least in my experience, the people who lead them, okay, guys, you know, before, you know, log on an hour before raid so we can all get our world buffs. Like it's becoming yeah. the norm now for, it is for the raid. norm for everybody well it's especially the norm at least for the ani and zg bus because they're so easy to do you know it's like okay just everybody just go over to the zandalar island like that takes five minutes yeah 
and then we'll pop a heart and we're going to do a port and we're going to go to Stormwind and get the Ani head and then we just fly out of there. So yeah, even that, and that's a real big buff right there. So yeah. it's so easy to do. There's no reason not to do it. And it helps those casual guilds get through the content, which, right. you know, great for them, but I'd rather have it be hard for everybody, you know, not a freebie. I but mean, so here's yeah. here's the other one that I was, you know, yeah, that I'll go on from my from my spiel. <laughs> now this one is a little bit changey. Um, is that I I would like to see flasks be much harder to get. Honestly, I mean, if I could, I would remove flasks from the game because they are too strong. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it's like that would be a a less palatable change, I think, for people than mm. to have fixes that makes it more challenging to have. So in 1.4, I think it was, uh, Black Lotus has changed from bind on pickup to bind on equip. Mm -hmm. So that allowed them to be sold. Yeah. So if they're bind on pickup, the only way that they could be made into a flask was for the alchemist oh. themselves to pick it mm -hmm. and then the alchemist themselves to also have the recipe right now my other change i think would be great is to make those recipes as well be bind on pickup so not only would the alchemists have to find the black lotus they would also have to get the three percent drop rate flask recipe from whatever the dungeon is now that won't stop people there's gonna be plenty that would still do that right but the number of flasks in the world would be dramatically lower do you think we'd see a lot more alchemists though I would think we would probably well we might. Yeah. That would be okay. Yeah. I don't mind that. Everybody and their dog is an herbalist. Yeah. So what's the big difference? I would like to see more alchemists in the world. I'd like to see less engineers because everybody <laughs> in the raid is an engineer. So everybody's got access to sapper charges. Yeah. Everybody's got access to gnomish chickens and Arknight Dragonlings mm -hmm. and all this other stuff that really boosts raid damage. Again, just making the raids easier by having that. I like the idea that your professions can mean something, that there's more changes to that. You know, one of the horrible parts about TBC is everybody had to be a leather worker for the drums. Mm. That's just awful gameplay design to have yeah. everybody forced into a profession spec. I want everybody yeah. to feel free to do what they want. So if you want to be the person who's really into farming stuff and wants to be helpful for your guild, you could be that guild alchemist who has mm. all the cool recipes. And they would be that, and then nobody's going to fault them for not being an engineer and not doing this other stuff. And, you know, they could get a lot of help for that. And that would probably be great gameplay because there'd probably be some people that would be going out scouting for that alchemist and be like, dude, get on over here. We need to go get that Black Lotus, you know, that kind of stuff. That would be really interesting. And, oh, hey, you want to see some world PvP battles? There's how you get it. Yeah. So do you think there's enough balance and benefit between engineering and alchemy that not everyone would shift to alchemy? Basically, what I'm asking, I, you, you know alchemy I'm asking. would be yeah. way too high pressure, way too much, I okay. think. Because okay. remember, the uh, the flasks themselves could still be sold, so you know you can still right. be buying them on the AH. And what you'd probably see is you'd see more guilds hoarding the flasks and saving them for. And they'd be a lot more expensive. A lot more expensive. Yeah, so you lot. wouldn't have people buff, you know, popping them every single raid, like. To me right now, the fact that if you want to be a competitive caster, you need to plan on having two flasks a night. Mm -hmm. A night? Are you kidding me? Like, I won't play a caster just for that reason. And they're not cheap. I don't want to be not competitive. And I'm not going to go out mm -hmm. grinding for flasks constantly. That's insane. No freaking way. So I, I want to see that kind of thing not affect the casual players, again, to feel like they're this worthless piece of crap who can't play a class simply because they're not no-lifing it like crazy. Now, if you want to no-life it, that still would allow you to no-life it. You could be that crazy alchemist, or you could be that crazy farmer who, you know, you know has an alchemist friend who is willing to give you flasks at a whatever competitive rate, you know. And you can still buy them, and you can still pop them every single raid, but those people will be far between and much, much more rare, and that would be great to me. Now, it's funny, because, like, a common theme we see, which, you know, it's, it's pretty kind of obvious, but in vanilla is almost going overboard. You see it a lot, you know, where people go, you know, flesh, they're not necessary. The, you know, world buffs, not necessary. But people do it because people like to see their numbers on the top, or, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Of course. Is that something that people 
like me as a healer, it's not, I'm not huge about like, I just like to, you know, do I like to have, thankfully healers don't need it too much. (laughs) Right. Right. Do I like to have wizard, you know, things like that? Yeah. It's nice, but like, it's not necessary. You know what I mean? I need my mana pots. I need my, uh, my friggin' beer from uh, dire mall. You know, like I have my certain consumables, uh, elixirs, whatever. And I'm good. You know what I mean? Like it's not huge, but a lot of the DPS, they're more on it because they want those numbers. They want to be top yep. on the DPS meter. Yep. And I understand that it's competitive and whatnot. And I think a lot of people like like that about vanilla. You know what I mean? Personally, myself, not as much. I mean, it's not that big to me, but I think a lot of people would be upset with that because they like that almost game breaking uh, feel. No, they'd like it happen. even more because it'll be even harder to do. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's that's a good argument. And the, you know, this those is... that are on top are truly on top because they're the ones getting the flasks, not right. anybody else. So right. yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's that's a good. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 the thing. It's the, weird... the beauty about your arguments is that you put a lot of thought into them. You do, and that it's you very do. hard to argue against. Yeah, and that's how you know it's a good, it's a good, it's a good argument. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's because that's I'm, what I've been yeah. trying to do. Figure out. It's like I just sit there going, "How can you possibly stay within the vanilla framework, right. but make the make the content how it was back in the day?" And the what it was back in the day was people were not popping flasks and they were not using world buffs. So how can you fix that? You know, and what if is they there? Were they were doing it way less? Yeah, than it, you know, way like, less. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think honestly, probably just bopping. Um, Black Lotuses alone would probably be the biggest deal, but that I don't would. know if it would be big enough because there's still going to be like the AV people who do that like all weekend yeah. long, you know, and it's like, uh, yeah. I want to have the knowledge that those people are also having to farm the recipe. I mean, right. to me, that would make it a little bit more even. It would be a little helpful. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe the flat, maybe the Black Lotus is enough, but but it would be interesting to see. A lot of very, very interesting things it's a a lot of topics and uh, you know it's just goes to show that vanilla is so much deeper and just so much there's so much to it It, it, it's insane how much there really is to vanilla like it's it's mind-boggling sometimes well it is it's what is great about the game is it's not just about the classes or the dungeons or the mechanics we're talking we've been how much of changing the game did I say that involved actually talking about class balancing? Like we just simply said, oh, 1.12 talents. You know, yeah. the, it's all about the mechanics. It's all about the consumables. It's about build in dungeons that you have to get. It's all this different facets that is incorporated into that. It's this big picture that involves every aspect of the game, and that's what makes it interesting. It's yeah. all of that stuff is all interwoven together. And everything else, it's so linear, it's so direct. It's like if you want to increase your DPS, you either master your rotation or you get better gear. How else do you do it? Nothing else. That's it. Yeah. That's. Uh... I agree. I agree. And, and I, I think that I need to sit long and hard and think about this. And you've you've uh, definitely not made this easy. And it's it, it that's good. <laughs> I'm glad though, because I, I like to be challenged in my thought process. I like to be challenged yeah. in my beliefs. It's yeah, and I'm, important. Yeah, it I'm, is. I'm open to hearing stuff from people. You know, there's there's valid arguments against it, but I do hope that Blizzard is looking strongly into seeing these kinds of things and thinking about the options and hopefully looking at the private servers and seeing the effect that these things have on them and to see how frequently they're being used by people, even even casual guilds, because even the casual guilds were popping Supreme Power Flasks all the mm. time. I'm like, come on, that is not in any way a casual kind of thing to do like flasks are they should be the one (laughs) percent they are not the something that the bottom 25 percent use and i saw it all the time if you were in nax and you weren't popping supreme power you were complete trash and (laughs) they would rail on you for it so you know it's it's crazy it's just not the game that we should be playing wow well i gotta say that like like melron said there's a lot it's almost like, you know, I I feel like I'm really uh, – it's always good to, you know, have people outside your bubble, you know, because, you know, me and Melderon, we talk, we're always like, you no, know, no changes, no changes. There are certain things that we just won't, uh, you know, give into, like, you know, well, obviously, but this is more on the lines of, like, you know, it makes sense to us. It, it, it almost – um has a certain quality of, like, yeah, this is the way vanilla – was you know and that's why i think we give it a lot more merit than you know what other people would and i think it's good to 
keep the conversation. Like, yo, add up. LFG to the game. You yeah, know, yeah like no, I mean, yeah. no I way, no yeah. way. You know, yeah. I'm not ever going to advocate that kind of stuff. But to me, the question is, do you care more about dogmatically following exactly what the game provided, or are you more interested in playing the game how it felt? Mm. And those are two different things because we've learned too much about the game to ignore what we know and it will never go back so you unlearn what we've learned (laughs) yeah you you either fix it or you accept that the game is not going to feel like how it used to be those are your only two options well i'm interested in what you guys think i really want to know because (laughs) i am um yeah i i am i am on the fence with this because i i I gotta admit taldrill you know this is something that ever since I heard the uh, classic cast, and I've, you know, I've heard you before. I, I think I've count on the classic. You, you mean you were, you were, yeah, uh, count on the classic. I'm sorry. Uh, we always he makes money from that, that all the time. That's why yeah. I had to bring it up. <laughs> um, you were on there before, I think, too, on count on the classic for yeah, a shorter the Druid. Yeah, right? Druid. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah, that was great too. And um, you know, you really got me thinking. I think that's good. You know, I think we sh- we shouldn't be so set in our ways to where we dismiss everything. You know. Um, it's always good to keep an open mind. So, um, I really want to know what you guys think, you know, yeah, please because, leave it in the comments. Yeah. This is, um, you know, this is all the game we love. It's something that you think would make vanilla feel more like vanilla, or do you think that no changes? It's gotta be absolutely 100%, you know, what Blizz was, but what even is that is the question. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, you know, because vanilla changed over, over the time. There's different things that happen in vanilla, so I think we have to look kind of at the whole picture, and sometimes step away from what we think is, you know, and and it might even uh, put you deeper in your beliefs of what you have now. But it's always good to explore that, I think. So I thank you, Taldrill, so much for yeah. uh, coming and and beating <laughs> yeah. us in the head with just a wealth of knowledge. All right, so <laughs> I have one more question before we actually we actually uh, wrap up and say goodbye. Are you for the Horde or for the Alliance, Taldr? I forget. I oh, for the Alliance, for sure. Uh, disregard <laughs> everything he said. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm hey, just hey. joking. Nobody, nobody burns down my tree, okay? That is oh, unacceptable. Yeah. So it takes our city. <laughs> I, I brought, I, that's true. I brought up this point. I actually think the burning of Taldr is important because it makes Vanilla WoW more relevant. As, I, I mean, yeah. I, I can't play retail because they did that. Like, that is yeah. literally my favorite zone. And to yeah. have that, even to know that it's gone, even if you could go back, I, I can't do it. I literally couldn't do it. It's too much for yeah. me. I hear you, dude. I, I, it really hit me. It hit me hit too, even though I'm yeah. not on yeah, my lines. It was yeah. hard. It just was hard. I was just the like, change of the no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was my first character was a, you know, was a Night Elf Rogue. Yeah. Even though I don't yeah. play lines anymore it, still, it was a Night Elf Rogue and that... I Man. love that zone. I love that zone. It hurts. Yeah. Well. Yeah, but, so let me do some housekeeping before we say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah do some housekeeping okay, before. guys. So if you are interested in learning more about the work that Taldrill's put in, <laughs> uh, we have two Discord <laughs> links that are on the screen in front of you, plus it'll be in the video description below. If you're listening on a podcast system, go visit our YouTube channel to get the links. Uh, I really am not going to say them because there's like a bunch of gibberish. But anyway, they're there. Um we have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel, if you're interested in uh, donating and getting some interesting rewards and making this podcast or video or our other videos possible, head over to patreon.com slash um, uh, def underscore Mel TV. You can find us on Twitter at, at def underscore Mel TV. Um, we are now available on every major podcast system, uh, excluding Spotify. We haven't got that yet. So we have... Uh, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. We're on all those. If you want to actually download an episode while you're at the gym or you're walking, if you don't want to sit and watch on YouTube, you can now listen to Def Talk on those systems as well. Uh, we have a Discord link as well. If you want to follow us um, in Discord, we have a Discord link. You'll get notified of new stuff, and we'll be just chatting in there generally every now and then. So um, that's basically all the housekeeping I had to say. Oh, it, oh, most importantly, if you want to be on Def Talk, we don't care who you are or what you do. We don't care if you're an um, amazing theory crafter like Taladril Tal- or if you're a content creator like Orkbit or some of the other people we've had on. Or, or just Dreamer. someone who loves the game. Yeah, you can email yeah. us at melderon.gaming at gmail.com and we'll put you in the list and we will get you on at some point. We promise that. So, yeah. So, Def Camp, do you have a, do you want to, anything to say? 
Close this up. I just want to say, guys, thank you so much. Taldrill, thank you so much for what you do. Um, thank you. If it wasn't for people like you, honestly, I don't know what the community, community would be like. You honestly, you give the community not only – you share your wealth of your knowledge – you also give the community, you know, something to talk about. You get people together. That is, you are literally the heart and soul of what Vanilla is. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and being the guy you are. It really means a lot to us, and I know it means a lot to the guys out there. So thank you so much. I really mean well, that. Well, thank you. It was a lot of fun to talk here. I appreciate it. Yeah. And guys, again, just share what you think. You know, are you uh, – do you think this is something that would, you know, on any of these topics, do you like, you know, the idea of a Druid tank? Do you like the idea of having uh, no world buffs, things like that? Let us know your opinion, guys, please. And um, until next time, this is Def Camp. And Meldron and Teladrill. All right, guys. We're signing off. Keep on keep on and grinding. Oh, yeah. <laughs>